The appreciation of art is truly a subjective one, in much the same way that the styling cues on cars would be. When it comes to MPVs though, I mean, let's be honest, they never have been considered to be works of art. I mean, there are only so many ways you could restyle a box. Not so, say, Citroen, which is why they've always put the Picasso signature to their MPVs. So we thought we'd put it to the test. We've come to Johannesburg Art Gallery to understand the characteristics that make Picasso such a non-conformist and popular artist and see if the new Picasso C4 actually has any of the shared characteristics. So I think it's pretty obvious that I'm a peasant when it comes to art appreciation terms, which is why I've got Musha here, who is the curator for the contemporary art section at Johannesburg Art Gallery. Picasso, I don't get him. Help me out understanding this. What's making him so cool? Uh, well, a lot of people don't understand Picasso because his work is so diverse and it's also like, very difficult for people to interact with it because it's not a pretty picture. But he was a front-runner and an innovator in what we call the Belle Epoque period of art, which was really the free spirit of the early 20th century and people were really exploring and having fun. Musha, obviously you look at Picasso's work, it's so diverse, so different, different materials, different styles. I guess that is what sets him apart, but are there certain characteristics that are kind of found in every single one of Picasso's works beside the signature. He went through so many different periods of his life where he was influenced by line and form and you can see that in some of them, these clean lines. And then he gets to a quirky phase later on in his life, you know, between the, the clean lines and the African period of his life, you get this kind of crazy, quirky, colourful and kind of Picasso. And so these kind of things almost always follow through in his work even though there were distinct periods in Picasso's history. Obviously his cubist works are the most recognizable and they're all kind of like the same, but everything else, Picasso was always pushing himself, he was always trying to be different, and he, always, he actually invented so many different styles of artwork that now are like hallmarks of the modern era of art. Traditionally, an MPV has always been seen as a mom's taxi. It's a box, it's boring, not really cool, stylish type of car. Looking at the C4 Picasso, does it break the mold? I think so. I think it's, uh, it's fun, it's quirky and it's very stylish. Are there some Picasso clean lines that you can see? Definitely. I think it models the clean lines that we saw in Picasso's artworks. And like I said, the quirkiness and the funness that comes out in Picasso's later works is definitely embodied in this car. This is important though, because you know at the end of the day, we don't want it to be like, okay, here we go, it's some marketing ploy by Citroen to go with the Picasso range. As the curator of Picasso's type of work, this is legitimate. Definitely, I think you can find that in a lot of Citroen cars and you definitely see it in this car. You own a Citroen, don't you? Yes, I own a C2. What makes a work of art, I guess, is something that is appreciated years after it came out. C2 still looks cool today. No, definitely, and that's what makes a work of art, as you say, it's, it's timeless. Mm. And something that was made 200, 300, 400 years ago should still be stylish and beautiful and appreciated. Its predecessor shared the Zara Hatches platform, but the C4 Picasso is on an all new EMP2 platform. What is cool about this is it's significantly lighter, and that means that uh, the clever guys at Citroen were able to make sure that the engine sits a lot lower in the vehicle. Why is that even important? Why do we care? Well, it lowers the sense of gravity of the vehicle, which uh, when you are driving on the road, especially at slightly higher speeds, it's going to be a lot more stable. But while I've got the hood up, 1.6 diesel is the only engine that the C4 Picasso comes in. Very, very clever as far as I'm concerned. People that are buying MPVs understand efficiency. They're kind of more quirky in terms of that as well, so probably willing to try out new things. The French have always made really good diesels. Four liters per hundred, it's insane. That is what they are getting, and that is what manufacturers always claim, and that is actually what we as journos are getting driving these vehicles as well. 105 CO2, so you're not paying any CO2 tax on it. Performance wise, very good. 85 kilowatts, 270 newton meters of torque. Plenty of punch getting your passengers around. Kind of feeling a tad intimidated like I was inside the Johannesburg Art Gallery because you don't want to touch a work of art and this interior literally is a work of art. It's beautiful. I mean, the French really do nail it down. I mean, everyone always talks about Audi's interiors being the benchmark but they're all the same. There's always such unique things. And I think you could own a car like this and only discover all these specialities years down the line. Key feature on the Dash Loud is obviously the seven inch integrated touchscreen, which really incorporates all of your driver controls and very cleverly, they don't have buttons. It's really got a little push to touch, which I really like a lot. We're obviously in the intensive, which comes with a 17 inch 
digital panoramic display. It really is digital driving at its best, I would say. But it really comes down to the seats. You know, we've got the lounge pack and it really does feel like a business class lounge. You've got the relaxed neck support, which really makes your driving position super comfortable. In the front, you have seat warmers and massage function on both the seats. And the passenger even has an extender, so you literally can just kick back and relax. It is beautiful. But there always are those quirky elements in every Citroen. And it's not just the little chrome detailing and the way they've laid things out. It's even things we've seen this before with the retractable sun visors, which are very clever for driver and passenger. Very, very nice touches. It just seems like I keep raving about the air vents on the C4 Picasso, but they are beautiful. You get into the back and they really are nicely positioned in the B pillar. What does make this a very special five seat is that when you do get into the back, the three seats are not bench seats, they're individualized. What is cool is that there is rack on this as well, so I can lower the seat, which makes it a little bit more comfortable giving me a reclining position. Leg room is good. Remember that this is my driving position. So with me sitting like this, I've got ample of space in the back. Very, very nice as well. Behind the seats, you've got your little tray table, but Citroen's gone one step further and put a little integrated light in. So if you are doing work, imagine your little kids are coloring in, they can do that at night now as well. So that for me is very, very cool. MPV is obviously all about practicality and space and creature comforts. They've got really nice little storage binnacles in the footwell. And of course, we haven't even got to the back, the boot. There's a lot of space back there. Nice little added feature being able to open the boot from the key fob. Not any new technology, but what I do like is they've kept it very, very simple. So many manufacturers have the sliding rail for a bootlet cover. Generally, they don't work. You keep getting them offline and it's a pain. This works really, really well. 537 liters of boot space is plenty. Flip the seats forward, 1,851. That is a lot. What is pretty cool is that your boot light also doubles up as a retractable torch. Not the brightest though, is it? But then neither am I today. And this is why I've always loved the French manufacturers because getting behind the wheel, you feel different. You feel like you're a non-conformist. You feel like you're breaking boundaries, trying something new and different. And I just wish more car manufacturers would kind of push the envelope a little bit in terms of their design. But sadly, if you look at the sales figures for French cars in South Africa, that alone means you're a non-conformist. But pricing on the C4 Picasso is pretty keen. 326,000 for the seduction, and then uh, 346 for the intensive means that this probably is a Picasso that you could afford.